Faith is a substance. Or it's like money to pay our way through life. You know, pay our light bill. Faith is the same thing, but it's not money. It's, it's to take care of us. It's to bring us through tribulations. It's to provide, have faith and doubt not. And God said nothing. And if you're a born again believer, you're not going to be running around here asking for things you don't need to be getting. Amen. If you do, you ain't save no how. Amen. Faith, that ain't what God give us faith for. Faith ain't me to have more faith than you got and outdo you. God knows what we can do and what we can't do. He didn't call all of us to do the same thing, but we all are, are, are testimonies of Him. And He's telling us here, now faith is. Now faith is the substance. When they were come, when they were come to the multitude, there came to him a certain man kneeling down to him saying, Lord, have mercy on me, on my son, for he is a lunatic and so vexed. For often he falls into the fire and often into the water. And I brought him to thy disciples and they could not cure him. Jesus said, O oh, you faithless, Perverse generation. How long should I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him here. Thank you, Jesus. I said, thank you, Jesus. Glory. Then came the disciples to Jesus in part and said, why cannot we cast him out? Jesus said to them, because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, Think about that little old thing you hardly see it. I can still see it. But a lot of people can't see it in their hand without glasses. But I can see it. It's one of the least seeds there are in the seeds. God is showing me and you that we can make it. And one thing about <clears throat> mustard, all these other vegetables, you put them in here where you fix them, boil them, or what you do with them. And they mix. But you put mustard, put a handful of mustard in turnips, put a handful of mustard, and when you boil in cabbages, when that, when you, when that old fork touches that mustard and you eat it, it, it tastes different. Mustard will not mix. Mustard seed will not mix. It still tastes just like, it don't taste like cabbage. It don't taste like uh, nothing. It tastes just like it is if you, if you didn't have nothing but mustard. So that's what God wants me and you to have. He wants us to have a faith that won't mix. Every time something goes wrong, you doubt. Every time something goes wrong, uh, uh, you, you start condemning yourself. But God give us all a measure of faith if we get born again <clears throat> and start using that faith he said as a grain of mustard seed it moved mountains yes. I was out there in the Ozark many years ago and probably you've heard me tell this all over the world out there in the west in part and in mountains they got mountains out there, a big mountain. And I was preaching about faith as a grain of mustard seed would move mountains. And some dude back there, they had, that back when the people in this country were, was hungry for God. There was thousands. Some old dude jumped up back there and said, Preacher, he don't mean mountains. So that was just, you know, Said he meant that faith is right. I said, oh, you think God's crazy? I said, Jesus is talking about a mountain. 
You don't believe what I'm telling you? If they still got on record in history, go back and check. Say, you weren't talking about a real mountain. You don't know what you're talking about, son. Man, something come on me like far. I raised my hand. I said, God, you said if I have faith as a grain of mustard seed, he's one of the Mozart mountains, the biggest one out there. I said, God, move that mountain a half a mile before the sun rises. And I said, if you don't, I'll never pick up that Bible again. Powers come on my soul like fire. I want you to know the next day, even it started, you know, back then, Walter Conkrite and, and Dan Rather and them was, uh, all them stations just stayed on to midnight. And Dan Rather was learning how to take over Walter Con- Conkrite to take over CBS. So, I woke up, I went, come on in from a meeting and thought, oh, well, I go to bed, get up in the morning, see what, and man, I want you to know, I woke up, something woke me up, I cut the, the TV owners in the room there, and Dan Rather was with Walter Comer, they was there discussing, and before he went off, and they said, that Ozark, biggest net there, has just moved, just some right after 11, something there, move one half a mile. Go look it up in your history. Hallelujah. And said nobody even woke up that was in the beds. It was everywhere. Hallelujah. Man, that done something for me. That really meant, and I've heard people say, well, he he wasn't talking about a mustard seed. He was talking about faith as a grain of mustard seed. You shall ask what you will and doubt not, and it shall be done unto you. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. You ain't got to have a mountain of faith to move a mustard seed. Thank God, give everybody in the world, even the infidels, he give them a measure of faith. Somebody say, "How are you?" Well, you say, "Well, the infidel he don't believe. He do believe, but he believe, not believes. That's still believing, but not believing that God is God. Not believing that God can do anything, but it's still faith. Not believing is faith, but it's the wrong way. Believing faith is believing the right way. Looking up to the man called Jesus." Oh, hallelujah. Jesus didn't lie. He told him, thank God you have faith as a grain of mustard seed and you can move mountain. Well, if you can move mountain, you can move sin. You can move God to save that old uh, 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 ugly, uh, well, anyway, you don't have ugly, but anyhow, hallelujah. Praise God. You can pray. You women can say, God, I want my husband saved. Glory. I want my children saved. And hang on. Hang on, hallelujah. God honors faith. It ain't but five words, but it's the greatest thing God ever given. Faith in God, faith in the Holy Ghost, faith in Jesus. Ask what you will, believe in your heart. And the Bible said, and doubt not, and nothing shall be impossible. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. Glory. But you got to use faith. Well, you take, you buy a brand new car and bring it and put it in your garage and let it sit there week after week and month after month. And if that thing been drove, it ain't nowhere but the brown wood from where you bought it. That thing will start decaying. You know what I'm talking about? It'll start decaying. As long as it's brand new, it's set on them lots for five years and it's still like brand new. But once you start using it, and that's what's wrong. You got to use your faith. You can't, you can't put it out there on a pinnacle. You got to start. You, you know why your faith don't work? You don't use it. Hallelujah. And it's done lost its value. It's done lost its faith. It's done lost its belief. God give everybody that faith, but when you don't let Jesus Christ believe it and exercise it, the more you exercise faith, the more powerful it becomes. Hallelujah. Faith as a grain of mustard seed, 
and you shall move mountain. That guy jumped up back there. There was about 20,000 people. He hollered up, Preacher! He wasn't talking about a real mountain. I looked at that dude. I said, You dude, you. As you think God's crazy like you are? I said, Jesus ain't crazy and God ain't crazy. When He speaks something, it means what it says and said what it meant. See, that's why people try to figure out the Bible. You don't figure the Bible out. That's what's wrong now. Everybody's trying to interpret the Bible. The Bible don't need to be interpreted. I said the Bible don't need to be interpreted. It's already interpreted. It done said what God meant for it to say and it don't need you to add nothing, don't need me to add nothing, but believe it like it is and you'll start seeing power of God begin to work. you start seeing God move circumstances out of your way, sickness out of your life, converting your family. you start seeing God providing for you when you begin to act that faith and believe in faith in God. Not your kind, but that faith as a little mustard seed. You know, Mama used to, as growing up after I was here, she had mustard, she had turnips, you know, in the garden. And she'd tell us, uh, the kids go out there and cut them leaves on it, come back again, you know. And she'd tell us, and I don't mix the mustard with the turnips. <laughs> you know, she cooked mustard sometimes, and, and she'd cook turnips, leaves, you know. And so, uh, one time she sent me on earlier to get everything. She's picking cotton. She sent me on to be sure you. And I, I thought, I'm going to try this. She told me, said, everything's ready. All you got to do is just light the fire. And there's everything's in there. So I went ahead of her and got the dinner started going. That's the dinner, not the supper, like we call it. Supper, supper. Now, dinner's 12 o'clock. Summer's in there. See, some of y'all don't know too much, but I'll explain it to you. <laughs> dinner ain't. Six o'clock in the evening, eight o'clock. You know now they they call dinner in the evening, but is it dinner time, which is twelve noon? If you're farmers, and sometime on jobs they give you fifteen minutes around eleven thirty or twelve. You know to uh, eat. If you you know jobs, you t take your food with you. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. glory. But you take a handful of mustard. And be cooking turnips and put that mustard in there. When that old fork gets in that mustard seed, you can tell the difference. That's faith. Mustard don't lose its faith. Hallelujah. I said, Mustard don't lose its faith. Thank God. And that's what's wrong today. we got too many people trying to mix a little of this and trying to mix a little of that. You can't do that. Faith moves mountains. So I stood up and, and that guy rebuked me. I said, Lord, before Walter Conkright and Dan Rather, he was learning, goes off of air at midnight and Dan Rather takes over on CBS because he's learning. I said, before that happened, I already seen that on, uh, in the newspaper or something. And I said, cut your TVs on if you got them. Don't cut your radios on. Because the same thing come out on the radio station those days. So I got in and I, uh, I'm not too much for TV less. It's gun smoke. Yeah. And then sometimes this turd gets on me a little bit about that. I said, well, I'm just smoking a little, little bit in here. <laughs> Hallelujah. Somebody asked me, why don't you like gun smoke? I said, one thing, he always gets his man. They beat him up, but man, next thing you know, he got the hands tied behind him on that horse, carrying him to jail. <laughs> and I like that kind of person, don't you? That's what we, we need today. We need that kind of love and power in our heart. Thank God when everything else has failed, that that faith. And so... You take a water of mustard and put it in your turnips. Try it. You can tell. Well, that's the way faith is. It ain't turnips. It ain't cabbage. Cabbage are mixed with it. 
mustard seed. Mustard won't mix with nothing. That's the reason God used it. See, God knew that before people even started eating much. He said, if you have faith, that was way back on thousands of years ago. Faith as a grain of mustard seed, you should say to this mountain. So when I said that, quoted that, that guy rebuked me. I stood up, I said, God, before Walter Conkright goes off the air and Dan Rather takes over, I didn't know they both going to be on. I said, everybody cut your TV on. CBS. I said, I'll lay my Bible down. I'll never pick it up again if this don't happen. I said, I'm asking God right now to show these doubters that faith can move a mountain. So one of them big Ozark mountains, we lifted our hands up. Thank God. said, Lord, before the... Uh, CBS goes off. Dan was, I uh, was, Walter Conn was working with him. Dan rather always done the last hour or 30 minutes, said what he had. But Walter Conn, I was up there helping him. They were both on that time. I cut the team. As quick as I got back to the room where I was standing, I cut the TV on CBS. I don't watch TV when I'm in meet, but cut it on. And Walter Conn said, We had a phenomena that come out here a while ago. Hallelujah. So that biggest Ozark mountain moved one half a mile and nobody even woke up. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I thought about a little old crazy guy by the name of David Turtle. Thank God said before midnight, God is going to move a mountain. Hallelujah. And it's real. I said it's real. Start using your faith. Faith is your substance. You either got to have one of them cars, I don't use them, or money. When you go out to eat, go buy gas, you got to have either the real stuff, and some people use his cards. I don't believe in that stuff myself. You know, if you want to do it, you do it. I just don't believe in that because you can run up bills sometimes you can't get caught up with. And I, if I ain't got the money, I don't do it myself. But you, you, you go ahead and try it. You'll find out when that faith that you got as a grain of mustard seed, it will do the job. Thank God. Real money, you can go and get 10 gallons, a $10 worth of fuel in it to pay for. If it's in change, you can do it. See, that's what I'm talking about. Faith that, that it is like real money, not counterfeit. Most people got counterfeit faith. Most people got counterfeit money, counterfeit faith. But you get that faith that won't mix with nothing. Believe God only. He said, have faith and doubt not. And you shall say to this mountain. And I told the people, I said, I'm going to let you all out a little early. I said, that big guy back there, the back of the big tent said, he wasn't talking about a real mountain preacher. I said, how do you know, dude? I said, let me tell you right now, God don't just run around like me and you do putting out words he don't mean. When God puts a word in the Bible, that's him. And the gates of hell can't prevail against that, the God's word. You run around here and down the Bible you want to, you might down yonder one day too. You hear what I'm telling you? You may down yonder. God gave us his word direct out of the mouth of Jesus and the, the Old Testament. And all these holy apostles, I mean prophets, that made the way until Jesus in 4,000 years before Jesus came in there that 6,000 years. Let me tell you something. They made the way for Jesus. They laid the foundation for a, a virgin to have a baby. Thank God and his name was Jesus. And where would we be if a virgin hadn't had a baby? Where would we be back 700 years over at Isaiah? He said it shall come to pass before the end that a virgin they persecuted him over in Isaiah. They persecuted him. But it happened seven years later. Thank God when God says something, it will happen somewhere or another. It will happen. And if you have faith and doubt not, God said you shall say to this mountain. So I spoke. I said, God, if you talk about mountain, move that Ozark mountain before CBS goes off. 
And Walter Conkright, and he was training Dan Rather. Man, I cut it. I said, I'm cutting a little short tonight. Man, I went back to my, I never cut on TV when I'm on the road and staying. I don't know, you know. So when I went back and about, I cut that TV on CBS. And Walter Conkright said, we had a phenomenal of a little while ago. <laughs> Out here in them Ozark Mountains. <laughs> Said a mountain moved a half a mile and folk didn't even wake up. <laughs> Hallelujah! <laughs> Glory to God! Not old boy, the next day he, he could look at me in that meeting that night, the next day when I went back. I said, What do you think about it, buddy? I said, did the mountain not move? God said, you get that right faith. And for, for his glory, be doing it for him. What I'm trying to use that for, he means he can move a mountain. He can move cancer. He can move the sicknesses. Thank God. He can recreate your eyeball. I've seen people could see without an eyeball because they believed. That's right. I've seen people in my lifetime could read with an empty socket. And take it out and read and tape this and up and read with nothing in there. I used to have a God that traveled me. me. Huh? Ronald Cohen. Ronald Cohen. He had one eye. And Ronald Cohen went, him and remember when Ronald Cohen used to drive with me. And he'd take that in the meeting, take that eye out, and thank God we tape out of it up. And I said, I'm going to show you. God said you can do it. And he'd read anything anybody brought up there. Hallelujah. Huh? I remember the man. I remember the man. He come and testified over here in the church. I saw him. I saw him. He traveled me for years. Yeah, it is real. It is. Yeah, you know, wrong coin. He he traveled me and he would, would demonstrate that miracle. And we would do that not for money reason. We're trying to show people, start believing God. That's what it was for. Start believing. There were but three people in the world ever happened to do that. And I got to meet all three of them people that, that could read without an eyeball. Drive a car without a ball. I said, well, I don't know about that, Donald. <laughs> I believe I'd like you to take that patch off. That. Good. Good. <laughs> I said, oh, let me drive. He traveled me for several years. I'm going to tell you something, folks. God's God. I said, he's God. But you know, Later in life, he got to mess it up with a woman's. And he went so far, and you know his eye quit working. You know, you know, you can't play with God. See, God has a reason. And he, uh, about three of these kind of people that I met in my lifetime that could that God let him see without an eyeball. But God is trying to show me in you, faith works. It wasn't the eyeball that we're seeing. It was God, that faith, that faith was reading the Bible. That faith was driving that car. That faith. God was putting that, that without God, that I couldn't, that empty eye, you can't see without an eyeball, but God can see with your nose. <laughs> God, if he wants to, he can see with your finger. Because he holds the water of the world. Every good gift and every perfect gift come from God. There's nothing too hard for God, the Bible said. Did you ever read that one? Nothing too hard for God. And what's wrong with people? They run around here trying to do things themselves, but let God start working faith through you. Let God start motivating himself through faith. And faith becomes powerful. Faith becomes unbelievable. Faith never fails. That's faith in God. The real, genuine, five little words never fails. But you got to practice it. You got to put it to action. And the more you, more you use faith, the more powerful it gets. Some people wonder why I've been out here so long. I use my faith. I've been out here longer than any man of history. More than any man of history. 64, 65 years. Never leaned on none of these denominations to support me. 
Thank God. Believe in God. Been in over 200 countries telling folks about a man. And sometimes people, even close to me, said, I wish you wouldn't talk so much about Jesus. You like you don't know nothing else. I said, well, I probably don't. And I don't want to know nothing else. But just Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Got him on my mind. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I'm going to keep him there all the time. Praise God because he's my Lord. He's my way. He's my truth. He's my life. Hallelujah. If you want to know about him, go over yonder with it. Uh, preach something else. I'm a Jesus man. I said, I'm a Jesus man. I tell you, if you put your faith in Jesus Christ and doubt not, God said nothing is impossible. Oh, hallelujah. I remember down yonder, LaGrange, Georgia, and part of it went over into that other country over there. Thank the Lord. And Sister Terrell was, before I knew, I just seen her here and there. She would, would uh, do her job, and on weekends she'd go and go to church over at our brother's church. You know, we called him church around Atlanta. We're just playing around. And so, I swear, I met her. Anyway, there was a Ashton about some questions. She was just young in the Lord, and she was asking questions. And uh, somebody called me up there. I said, what do you think? Some, some dude that I knew out in sin that drank and everything, then he claimed he got saved, and, and I found he'd done been married a whole bunch of time, but, but he might have got real saved. I don't know. They warned me they knew I knew him because, you know, back there. And they called me up there, and they was talking to Sister Terrell, trying to get uh, a date. Heard a date that guy. You know? And so they called me up and said, what do you think about this guy? I said, I don't know nothing about him. Don't want to know nothing about him. I said, all I know how I, I feel about her. And when I left, bless her little heart, she said she went back after this thing was over and went back to Atlanta up there close where she lived. What did he mean? How I feel about it. But I tell you, that old phone, I got her phone number. I called up and I said, I love you and I want to marry you. I don't care how long it takes. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> love, faith. Amen. And the Lord has shown me that, that she would stand with me no matter what happened. You know, some of you men know what I'm talking about. Some of you women know what I'm talking about. Going through uh, hard times and stand up for God. How you... If you, your husband want to get out there in the world or, or some of you, you know what I'm talking about. And some of you men knows how that, that your wife, she didn't want to go to church, didn't want to do that, want to wear pants and all that kind of stuff. And here you trying to lift a standard up. You know what I'm talking about. Let me tell you something. That's hard kind of living. But I tell you, she got back home. I got her phone number and I called her up and I told her, I said, I just want to tell you that I love you and I want to marry you. I just don't care how long it takes. It'll take a while. But if you do, I want to start taking care of you. And I got a house up there you can move into if you wish to. Thank God. And I will guarantee you I will not come over there not one time. When I come in, when I'm off after six weeks, I'll call you and we'll go out. And have maybe a dinner with y'all call it lunch, but I don't call it lunch, I call it dinner. And that one in the evening y'all call dinner, I call that supper. See, y'all don't have no sense if you call it dinner. Dinner time is 12 o'clock. Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. You know what people do? Well, I'm getting off track here, but I'm just telling you, I was a country boy. And the Bible's not the Bible, but they say, they always said a country boy knows how to survive. Hallelujah. Ain't that right? A country boy knows how to survive. So I just called her up and told her, I said, look, I love you.